Welcome to At Home with Ivers, or rather, At Home in this one room you keep seeing over and over. I, I am, uh, I'm a little stir crazy, <laughs> but I'm also trying to find the silver lining in all this, and I'm totally, continually, and amazingly inspired by hearing from you and our board. We had this board meeting this week that was so amazing, even in all these challenges, people that believe in us, and how we believe in our community, and I believe in you, and... It has been a difficult week, actually, but I'm really trying to bolster myself to believe that people are going to need art in their lives more than ever. And uh, so we're working hard to that end. A couple of announcements before we get into the main event here in a little bit. The viewing of Outside Modeling Car, that video is now closed, but thank you for uh, those of you who purchased tickets and watched it and for all the feedback. The Pacific Playwrights Festival panel was a huge success. We had tons of folks crammed into a Zoom meeting listening to these inimitable and really stunningly uh, thoughtful and beautiful playwrights speak about their work. Uh, thank you to everyone on our SCR staff. Uh, thank you to HowlRound for helping uh, and for... Um, kind of giving us a, a, another platform for, for that to be available. Uh, May 15th deadline for renew, uh, early bird subscription renewals is coming up. Look, uh, every one of us has been impacted by this pandemic. So I think it's important that, that you understand, if you don't already, that our subscribers are dear to us. We need you. Um, I know you are going to need a place to gather and to hear the stories of our time. Uh, and so if you need some extra assistance uh, or you want to get on a payment plan or we can accommodate somehow the subscription in a different way, spreading it out over time, uh, whatever it is, email us at boxoffice at scr.org. The reality is, is we don't exist without you. And so let us know what we can do. Also, every week I do this, there's a chance to win two tickets. Send in the answer at trivia at scr.org. And, uh, We'll choose from the bucket of uh, of correct answers and um, give away two tickets to next season. We're deep in planning. We're deep in strategizing. We are um, looking at all the options uh, now that this season, unfortunately, has been canceled. We're trying to look ahead and see how we, how, when, where, and in what way we come back. Uh, stay positive. Stay with us. Uh, Ivers at scr.org if you want to reach out. All right, now to the main event. Uh, I am really, really excited that I get to speak with Richard Doyle today, one of the founding members of SCR, an amazing, um, amazing man, uh, a gentle and uh, thoughtful soul, and uh, one of the people immediately uh, uh, that's part of the SCR legacy that I connect with. So I hope you enjoyed this chat, and uh, I know you're looking forward to seeing him as the new Scrooge. I am too. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my heroes, Richard Doyle. <laughs> How are you? They're probably not used to seeing me without a hat. I usually have one on. Richard Doyle, who's an extraordinary artist, actor, um, one of the founding members of South Coast Repertory, one of our leading actors, and also one of the great utilitarian actors of the American <laughs> theater, which is what I love about you. Um, 56 years. Uh, with the company, which is how many years the company has existed. <laughs> I'm proud under my brief tenure that you'll be uh, uh, saying the role of Scrooge when we get there. Oh, humbug. Uh, but I'm... <laughs> oh, it's good. It's coming. Uh, I'm most proud of the fact that... Uh, I mean, I'm proud of your legacy, but that, that from the very beginning sort of meetings that I had at in Costa Mesa after the interviews and stuff, I was able to early on start connecting with you. And I think we continue to connect. And I just, I'm a huge fan. You know that. I, I love your spirit. And I'm really grateful that you're doing this. And I'm, gr I'm grateful that you're happy and you're healthy. <laughs> um, happy and healthy. And uh, um, it, it's, this has been a lifelong journey, obviously, for me. Uh, SCR has been. And it has been uh, just a... a just a goal and a pursuit of mine since I can remember as a young artist, I had a, my brother, Robert Doyle, who has uh, passed on, but uh, he was a principal actor at the Actors Workshop in San Francisco. And I was in tow with him because my father was ill at the time and in hospital and my mother was away taking care of her 
uh, father who was also ill down here in the LA area. We were in San Francisco. So I got drug along with my brother to the actor's workshop. And then I was pressed into service with Tom Roski and Bob Phelan and some of the principals back in the day to work in a children's theater uh, that they had down at the old Encore, the subterranean theater there in downtown San Francisco. So I brushed elbows, as it were. Actually, that would be, it would be handy today since we can't shake hands. But anyway, I brushed elbows with some fine theater actors. And it was at that point that I realized, oh boy, this is what I want to do. You got the bug. And the rest is uh, history, as they say. I ran into, met David and Martin. David was actually, my, David Ems was my teacher in uh, junior college in Long Beach, California. He was starting there his first year of teaching, and I was in his drama class. Oh, my uh, God. Not knowing how you launched uh, a career as, a, as an actor artist. So I enrolled in this drama class, and he read down the list of names as he walked into the class. And he said, uh, Richard Doyle, who's sitting in the back? And he, he called me down. I thought, oh, boy, <laughs> I'm being kicked out of the class because my father's in the Navy or something. But he called me down there and he said, are you any relation to Bob Doyle, Robert Doyle of uh, Actors Workshop fame? And I said, well, in essence, what he said was, as good as he is, we're starting a theater. So I want you to come down and meet my mates, you know, at, at South Coast Repertory. I don't even know if it had a name at that point, but I went down, I met them all and I joined the theater on the spot because you could, in a way, and you know what I'm talking about, David, you, you can kind of tell the theater people that there's just something about them. And when I was in that theater, the old, what was became the second step theater upstairs there above a, a Marine yeah. swap shop, uh, <laughs> I realized, oh boy, these, uh, this is what I want to be. And that, that, that's where it started down on Villa way. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I, I love reading the book. I love more when I, you know, you know, this where I, I asked with Martin and David, you know, uh, on a on a continual basis if, at home virtually I talk to them every Wednesday we have a standing date and and you know they're great I, we, we we talk shop a little bit but I always want to know the story okay were you a matador guy when it was time for drinks or did you like the other place that your people went for drinks you know I want to know where all the where all the stories were told after the shows when who went up on lines that night who made you laugh what 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 bar? I mean, isn't the Matador still there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Isn't that one of the watering it's still uh, uh, the founders and I, the, the, the Arcoustic and, and Don Took and Hal Landon and I, we still have a lunch there once a month on the first Monday of each month. We go to the El Matador and sit down there. We, we don't imbibe at this point in our lives, but we do have lunch. And yes, around that, kind of Hal said, uh, I, I, he, he threatened to invite me to one of those, and then this thing hit, and I said, oh, I, that, that, that would be a bucketless moment. Uh, oh, you'd be, it's a standing so, invite. You should come and join Thank us. you. You know, the other thing about our founding members, you, you, you chief among them, is, you know, the vitality that you still bring to the company and your passion about the company. And, you know, I'll never forget one of our first meetings, um, you said to me, I don't need to be in the spotlight. What I need to do is do whatever you need, David Ivers, to help FDR. I will never forget those words. And they still resonate with me. And in my darkest hours of late of what are we going to do, I'm bolstered by the founding members and I'm bolstered by the, those words. How do you keep you about your work and as it continually relates to South Coast Rep, because I think, you know, it ebbs and flows, but, but you've always presented so positively and keenly about not only the art that you do, but how it relates to South Coast. So how do you keep that fire alive? I think that for, well, for me, I can speak for myself, that it became such an important thing to me, for a lot of reasons, going way back in my early childhood, even, I, I was a kid who moved around a lot because my father was a career serviceman. Uh, and I, I lived in Italy for a long, long time, years when I was a kid. I've lived all over the world. And some would say, oh, that's wonderful. And indeed, it was a great part of my reason, I think, to embody a lot of the characters that I'd been called upon to do at SCR and plays has been that I, I actually 
exactly a lot of these people. I knew their, I knew them. They were people from foreign countries trying to speak English and the dialect that they had. And so I, I collected those things. And of course, you know, Irish people are all mimics. My father was a great mimic. So we were always mimicking these people. So I came away with that. But what I didn't come away with was that wonderful thing that my, my wife has uh, she her mother still lives in the house in which she was born wow so she was born into a home she went to school there went to junior high high school had all these friends for all of her life i didn't have those yeah. things and i missed that and when i found david and martin and uh, jack davis the late jess and Richard Rickow and uh, just a lot of great and 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 guys that are there still now Don Took and uh, uh, Arcoustic. I I thought you know what I don't need to go anywhere because we go everywhere in plays. You know that's what I love about the theater being an actor is that you get to kind of create these superstructure people and then inhabit those people for two hours every day right. on the stage. And I I came to this love you. And so when I saw the ability to stay in one place with people who I admired to me in, in, in all the good parts of that and all the bad parts of that, you know, we, we, it's not that we didn't have differences. We certainly did. But I, I told, I've told this to people before, and this is true to any subscribers that are listening now, they'll know this, or potential subscribers, is that where SCR was concerned, the, the core company, we left it on the stage yeah. every night yeah. when you came to talk back i would say this to talk back people you know i'm glad the questions but to tell you the truth you've seen everything i have to say about this play tonight when you sat and watched this performance i guarantee you i didn't hold back a single yeah. thing whatever i learned that pertained to telling this story you saw it and that's kind of the way we approached it and i'm sure we're not alone as a professional theater company uh, that's kind of need to do you know, you, you support the other actors' truth and you tell the story. And that I later came to learn. I, I don't think I knew it when I started. But I, I, I came to learn that, that is, that's the ensemble thing. And I think that that later came to, to be what I associated with family. And, uh, and then when David and Martin decided to take, when Jerry Patch decided to take on the mantle of a new play theater, then we, we, we said that to writers. We're here to support your truth. We're going to support what you've done. We're here to make your story work the way you see it. And, and we can tell you that we have a core company that is dedicated to doing that. Yeah. And I think if we attracted people to work here as artists in all the various things that we do, it's had that as our, as our motto, sort of. And, um, and it wasn't just something we spoke about, it was something that we did. And, I, and that for me, that became a home. And I literally, I raised my family here. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I bought a home here, I raised my son here, put him through college, I raised my daughter here. Now my daughter, of course, has uh, three children <laughs> and lives here with her husband who's a writer. And she grew up in this family uh, of, of SCR. And, uh, you know, she, she didn't become an actress. She is a writer, but she had, a, she had an experience that she will, will never outgrow or outlive. She passes it on to her own family every day. Yeah. And it's that great thing of, I, I suppose a lot of people who have factory towns and what have you, they have a feeling of connection to the place where they work. But this was the place that I chose to work and I helped build it. And going back to your earlier comment, when I say to you that I'm, I'm here to help you do whatever you need done for SCR, that's my SCR. That's my yes. theater. And my kids grew up here. And, you know, I, I had issues, CR. There were, there were times when David and I went at each other, ask him about spoke song. He'll tell you how we went <laughs> down on that. I wanted to play Frank Stock, and he wanted me to play Julian Stock. And so but that's, I ended up being a brother, you know, that's isn't all. That the flip, that's the flip. That's, that's part of family. And yeah. it's, it's the intimacy, right? You know, you, you, and that's what I love about the organization too. Another thing I love about it is we, we, we get we're in the passionate yeah. conversation yeah. because we trust each other. And look, I, we've talked about this too. You know, I, I come from that. I come from leave it on the stage. Yeah. You know, I come from, 
like a vigorous there's no marking it at where i and how i was trained there's no there's no sort of like i can't hear you in the back row uh right you know i come from the sort of musculature of the theater where um you're seeing beads of sweat and spit fly which presently makes it even more difficult to um perform during this pandemic <laughs> but yeah but but uh i i recognize that in you immediately um and you know, i recognize the family part of it too because the great ensemble companies share that you know and actually it's one of the things i, I so hope in the future to bring back i i'm i'm really keen to bring back uh, rep the repetitive cycle of actors so that our audience connects back to oh i saw them and you know the home team at a box <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, our audience is, that, that speaks to community and you want to root for someone. And I think that, that that's in the DNA of the organization. And some of it just needs to be, a little brasso needs to be put on it and, and yeah, shine and it back David, up again. David, when we it. started, David was, a, he had a, 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 an expression that he used, which sometimes <laughs> consternated us, but he liked depth of casting. So whether it was the coal block vendor and Juno and the Paycock, you know, yes. you want any blocks, whatever, if, you know, that was Ron Bowsey. He was a fantastic actor, gifted character, yes. but he came on all muddled up with coal dust all over yes. us, selling coal blocks. But it well, well, was. We used to you call it. Audience, you saw it all, you know, you saw yes, Johnny, yes. you saw Juno, you saw, you know, Jack right. and uh, yeah. And, uh, and then you, you, you I, I, we, well, I, well, I was in, you know, we've talked. I, I was in the resident acting company at the Denver Center, you know, for ten years. And and when we'd sit and get our our roster of casting for the for the the next season at the end of the given season we were in, you know, and I'll, you know, Donovan Marley, and you know, uh, oh, who totally, was yeah. just incredible guy director. He was the artistic director for many many years before Ken Thompson took it, and, and I had the privilege of working under him for a couple of years. When we got to those roles and we were part of the resident acting company, he would say, "Look, it's really the dramatic engine of the show, <laughs> you know." And you knew, and you knew you were sunk. It meant you, you, had a, you, had a, you had a limp, three different parts, five lines per part, a beard, mustache, and you know, it's like this is the <laughs> yeah. You spent more engine. time putting your makeup on than you did doing your part on yeah. stage. The one thing I've always loved about theater is that there are things you can see in the theater the theatricality of which cannot be repeated anywhere else. And the, right. the, the late Mark Rucker, uh, a uh, young director I just love. Brilliant. I worked with him. He did a, produc a, a production of Cyrano uh, here. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I, I played captain of the guard. It wasn't a big part, but it was an, an important bit of thing. And because I'd been a soldier in, in the army in combat, he, he wanted me, we did the war sequence in, in Cyrano. So he wanted me to help stage that, put that together. And I was happy to help him. I don't usually like to go there, but, but most importantly was we were, we were all in on that and the audience just loved it. But I went to a talk back at some business company that was going to give the theater some money. And when I finished it, a gentleman walked up to me and he said, I just wanted to tell you that I, I got a ticket to Cyrano. I sat very near the back of the theater. He said, but people told me I shouldn't miss it. So I, I sat, and while he was telling me this, the tears oh. started to form in his eyes. And he said, I just wanted to say, I, I just sat there after the audience left the theater and I just sat there because I didn't want it to end. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. There it is. If you ever needed a little juice to get you up again for the next one, there it is. Yeah. Those are the kind of things that we all thought about when we played the coal block vendors and what have you and uh, small parts in plays is that if this wasn't here, something would be missing. And it wouldn't. And the thing about in a play, in a play, the saving feature is that character is never just there to fill in. No. That's not a character to do a transition. Everything that's in a play is there because it's supposed to be. Look, we, you and I could talk for hours. A couple things I want to get to yeah. um, in this time format. Um, uh, one, let me just do the trivia question first, which will be a sort of inside one. Uh, I know you'll know it, uh, the answer. But for those of you out there, the trivia question here is, what was the first role that Richard Doyle played, or the first play or the first role, um, 
uh, at South Coast Repertory. And, and I guess speaking of roles, that the page that I'd like to turn to a little bit is uh, you accepted the uh, offer to uh, be the next uh, Scrooge here at uh, South Coast Rep in this oh my, uh, I got amazing it. legacy of this adaptation. So tell me a uh, couple things about it. Does it excite you? And what's it like to all of a sudden move there after hearing it, hearing how, hearing, you know, how, how do you... How do you start to process what it means through through your interpretation with a new director too, which is exciting, you know? Al is a, a tough act to follow, seriously. I mean, he really made that interpretation in uh, John David Keller's production, SCR's uh, A Christmas Carol. But I, I began in the production, I was in it for 37 years, uh, but I began as a, kind of a, I filled in here and there because I joined the production the year after it started. But I played a lot of different things. I played Fred. Um, I played certainly played the solicitors. We kind of mixed it up a little bit back in those days. John David moved us around as he needed us, as we got guest people to come in and play parts. Uh, as I said, I played uh, I played Fezziwig. I played Joe the Cider Vendor. But uh, as we were just talking about, what that gives you as an actor is a, a lot of different points of view on how this story unfolds yeah. and all the different ways that those encounters with those spirits can affect Ebenezer Scrooge and, and that uh, involvement with those ghosts and how that moves him towards his final epiphany where he makes his choice you know to turn the corner on his life however late it might be and so yeah, I I would say that it's um, a challenge, but I don't know any stage role, the smallest of which I certainly have played, but uh, that isn't a challenge. Yeah. For me, anytime for me, anytime I step out on an SCR stage, that's a challenge that I willingly accept. Those are SCR subscribers, and I would always think to myself, boyo. Oh, the same 12,000 subscribers that saw you just, a, you know, a few weeks ago and this and that. And now yeah. you've got to sell them on the idea that they, you're this guy and you're telling this, yeah. guy, get them on board and, uh, totally. and, and, and draw them, draw them in, which is something that theater taught me how to do that. I didn't know as an entertainer, uh, I was all about putting it out there. So, yeah. and then as a stage actor, you do find that some of the most important moments you have are the ones that, draw the audience in their seats but they're kind of leaning forward like oh wow. right, right. yeah you know, ah, you know. Ah, and so ah. those are the most certainly the bah humbugs and what have you you know in christmas carol are there and everybody loves to hate the old curmudgeon but then all those other subtle little things that dickens has so skillfully laid in the story those all get to be he toyed with and played with and i think that that's what Hisa and i will be finding as we uh, go after this uh, story we'll be finding all those little moments and things that i can bring to those that may be a little different you know but uh the other great thing about it is that hal is a dear dear friend of mine and we have been very close raised our families together uh we've been tight buddies for a long time and uh we've worked very closely on the relationship between uh, ebenezer scrooge and the ghost of past and in that we discovered together a lot of things about ebenezer and I think those that will all inform things that I do. Yeah, I I I am trying to think here uh, this week particularly because uh, to be honest, and I mentioned my intro, it's uh, this was a hard week. The coronavirus and things associated with it have intersected personally with my life. Finally, you know where I know people and. Oh. And it's been some tragedy, you know, and, and it's just, and that on top of SCR, and I don't want to, I don't want to belabor the point, right? We all have to go in and out and I'm an optimist by nature, but uh, so I've been, I've been trying to think of, of the silver linings and, you know, I, I just had this moment when I heard the news in your life uh, that is, is so life affirming yeah. that when I heard it, I, I gasped, you know, and I'm sure I don't. I'm not even associated with it. Can we end by you sharing the the, the news that's in your life right now? Do you mind? Oh no, no. I, I have two new granddaughters, Sarah Doyle, who was actually in a production of Christmas Carol, uh, as was my son, <laughs> Peter and Cratchit. Uh, anyway, the the um, 
my daughter had two daughters, twins, and they oh, are Scarlet so and Indigo are their names. Gorgeous. And I have a grandson, also her son, named Burnham. Oh, I, I want to thank you for doing this. You're a, you're a gem, and I hope you'll give my love to Jenny and the rest of your family. Just you a gotcha. shout out to SCR subscribers if you're out there or if your audience. Thank you so much. The one thing I don't think I did give credit to so much that we love you all, SCR family, SCR family, subscribers, audience, theater goers out there in Orange County. You made it happen for us and we will be back again. You betcha. Be safe. We'll talk soon. Thank you, my friend. Love that guy. That's it. Thanks. Um, we'll see you next week. Please uh, shoot me an email if you want to discuss anything, if you have ideas, anything you want to see on this platform, ivers at scr.org. Stay safe, be well, and uh, find that silver lining. <laughs>